and we can start with the presentation, I think. Okay, maybe I just a few words. Hello from everyone. Uh, today, um, Orfeas Menis will be presenting uh, parts of the results within the Weave project, a project that um, we have been working on for the past uh, almost two years. Um, today, we will be talk about we will be talking about the semantic enrichment and validation uh, for EDM records, uh, and we will see what new has been uh, developed within this uh, project. Um, at this point, I would also like to mention that um, this is one of the sessions that we will uh, be having. We will be, we'll be having more of these uh, in the coming days. And you're also invited to attend those where we will be presenting the whole real view toolkit. Uh, okay, now I, I would love like to give um, the floor to Orfeas. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. I'm Ofes, and uh, yeah, as mentioned before today, that uh, we will talk about Shades. It's a semantic enrichment platform that we have developed, and uh, we further enhanced during the week project, where we also used it to semantically enrich some records. So I'll do a brief presentation just to everyone for understand what this platform is about, and then I will showcase some things on the platform. So, and data management platform. Data from multiple sources and of various formats. So we can see that we can import data, either it's in XML, CSV, JSON, whatever the format is, we transform everything to RDF, and then we import it to Sage. Then in Sage, we have some services that you can enrich your data. So we will talk a bit about them in later. And uh, we also have created, a, let's say, human the loop approach where you can validate. And in some cases, we try to retrain our tools. So in order to give better results, then the output of all this can be sent either to Europeana, for example, that we have the cooperation and the, the tool is integrated to their system, or you can just export your enriched data after you clean them and you reformat them. Uh, the main technology that we use is basically RDF. Everything is transformed to RDF. We use Sparkle as a query language, let's say, to talk with our databases, where we use a Virtuoso triple store. And we also have a Mongo database for uh, the, the functionality of the main platform. Now, the main services that we use to enrich the data, we have three main annotators, let's say. Basically, it's a Sparkle annotator, which is a, we use a Sparkle endpoint of an external knowledge base like Wikidata, and uh, we transform the data in a format that we can use in order to link this link our data with this external knowledge base. We will see examples in the next slides. Then we have an Earth annotator, which is basically an NLP tool that uh, performs named entity recognition and disambiguation. The tool basically takes a text and then links it to named entities like persons, organizations, place names, etc. And we have also a thesaurus annotator, which performs smart string matching uh, with given vocabularies. So if we have our data and we also have a custom vocabulary that we have built or another vocabulary that there exists online, we can link it through this tool. And we also use regular expressions to pre-process the data and reformat them in the way that we need. So an example for each annotator, as we said, in the Sparkle annotator, we have some documents. And then we have, let's say, in the creator field, a name. So we see that in this form, it's not really easily to link it to Wikidata. So we use some regular expressions to reformat this text into something that the Sparkle endpoint of Wikidata would understand. And then we use our Sparkle annotator to link to the respective Wikidata entity. After that, you can just put the link in your record so that you have access to all the resources of Wikidata. You can also harvest more things. Maybe you also need some uh, information about, let's say, the country of origin of the creator, the date of birth, or anything else. 
So basically how you create linked data. You have a raw text and now we have linked it to Wikidata and now we have unlimited potential. We can do whatever we want since we are linked to the grid, let's say, of Wikidata and to the graph. The NEND annotator is more plug and play tool. You don't need to reformat anything and it works better on big text. So let's say you have a description and you want to see generally what entities there exist. And also again, link to Wikidata, for example. So this tool scans the whole text, it detects named entities, and then it links it to the respective Wikidata entities again. So we can see that now I just gave it the whole text and the tool on its own managed to find that there exists a painting in here, Nightbox, there exists a painter, Edward Hopper, and there now it also found the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. So in the beginning, I just had a record with the raw text. Again, now I linked it and I can harvest whatever I need from the Wikidata and I can create my linked data. And we also have the thesaurus annotator, as you mentioned, that we have a text again, we have a thesaurus or a vocabulary if you wish, and we are able to detect the entities of the thesaurus within our text with a little bit of fuzziness, let's say, because you don't need to do exact math. You want to detect that bluish is basically what you want to link with blue. Here we have the basically the source with colors and uh, materials. Uh, this is also an annotator that we use during Weave, and we will see some examples of how it worked. And also a pro of this annotator is that it's really fast. While the nerd annotator that we showed here, because it involves some AI, it's usually a bit slower. The, name te uh, the main technologies that we use is basically on NLP, natural language processing. Uh, the main part is named entity recognition and ambiguation tools, which is also the uh, data. We use some lemmatization for the smart string matching. And in some cases, a BERT or other transforming based uh, deep learning models have been employed to enhance the results. So what kind of enrichments can SAGE produce? The main Functionality is that it, link, uh, it links text to external URIs. As we said, we can link our records with external knowledge bases like we data, geonames, uh, Getty, vocabularies, and uh, anything like that. So this is the main functionality. After you link to the external knowledge base, then you can harvest, as we said, additional information. So let's say, as uh, we said in an example, after I link, I can uh, take some more uh, fields. I can link it to other vocabularies because you can see that Wikidata is also linked to other vocabularies, to other knowledge bases. So this is the main functionality of the tool. A few words about the human the loop approach. Uh, after the automatic enrichment, you will have uh, a validation subsystem because in some cases, the tools make mistakes. They, they might need some fine tuning. So we have a system that human validators come in, and they can accept or reject the enrichments from the tool. And we try to generalize those observations to first uh, improve our tools, which is something that we're experimenting currently, but also of course to generalize observations and filter out the unwanted enrichments. You can create some filters based on the validators nodes and filter out all the rejected annotations or either accept based on a score, for example, because most of the tools also provide a score, a confidence, let's say. As I also mentioned, Sage is also integrated with Europeana. You can harvest through the Europeana API. Now we also have a new functionality that you can harvest directly from Mint. I don't know, some of you I think are already familiar with Mint. I will not get into details, just basically a lot to ingest material to Europeana. And uh, yeah, as you can see, you can close the whole loop. You can harvest things from Europeana, you can process, you can enrich, you can do whatever you want. And then through Mint, you can push it back to Europeana and publish again. Some numbers because Shades has been also used in previous projects. We have more than 3 million enrichments in more than 1 million records. We have uh, more than 50 active users and it has also been by five uh, European aggregators, and we're still improving, and there are still more to come. So, conclusion about what we can do with Shades. 
the main part is that we can transform your data of any format and from any source into RDF and import it. So you can have, let's say, a uniform representation of your data. You can clean, you can uh, do whatever you want with your data since you have them in a form in a uniform way. So it's easier to distinguish, uh, let's say, peculiarities in the data. And semantically enriched, you can uh, create a custom vocabulary. I think I didn't mention that. I will also say that we created a custom vocabulary for the Weave project. And then you can link to external knowledge bases, to the vocabularies, etc. And of course, then it's the validation part, which is you can manually validate the part or all the enrichments if you wish. You can create some filters based on the validation observations. And uh, of course, at the end, you can export the improved data set and either publish it to Europeana or you can just take it in your own format in the whatever format suits you, suits you like in RDF, in CSVs, whatever, and use it. We're also working some future improvements. Uh, we want to employ even more enrichment services because some of uh, the existing ones need an expert user. Now we're also trying to automate this procedure so that we can give it to end users so that they could uh, use them on their own and they don't need our assistance because currently the, the aggregator, let's say, comes to us and we perform the reason for them. Uh, we also work on the validation framework and we do that also uh, in cooperation with Europeana because we want to ensure the best quality of the results and Europeana is really interested in that because they don't want to have any enrichments that are not valid. So we're currently working also on finding uh, the best uh, target field, let's say, for the enrichments, so that we can identify if what we enrich is a creator, if it's a place name, if it's uh, the topic, if it's the type of the material. So we're currently trying to also investigate not only accept or reject the enrichments, but also identify the best field for this enrichment. And as I said, we're trying to simplify the platform so that we can also give it to end users and not use it only like with the, the expert users that we have here in the lab. So now I can just showcase some of what I mentioned in the tool. I'll do it also with the Weave data. I'll try to keep it short so that we don't have problem in the time. So this is the main platform. I have logged in as a Weave user. Here we have all the Weave data sets. The main functionality that we will see today is like how you can import a collection, uh, how you can enrich uh, if you see the collections, so you have an overview of data, and then we will see how we enrich them. We will see that we have the custom vocabularies, as we mentioned, and then we will see the validation. So I will just showcase a very simple example of how we import a data set from Mint, as I said, Mint data set. This is just a name that we want to identify our data set on how we see it. Doesn't. And then you can either import all the data sets of an aggregator, if you wish, but for now it will take. Just Data set ID. And you execute it. I have some connection issues, so I might need to refresh at some points. So you can see now these are the records that are being ingested to the tool. Progress. You also have to see if any of the records had the wrong format or anything, or it fails. Now we have our data set. That's it. That's that's the whole thing to import the data set. And you just can, and now you can just publish the data set and you can start enriching and do whatever. So now let's see a data set that we have published before. So let's see, this is the same thing that we just entered. You can see the records. And if you wish, you have a link to all the records in Mint. 
just an overview. It doesn't say much, it's just basically some URIs and some identifiers. The important thing is that you can have an overview of the fields. So let's say that I want to enrich the description or the title, whatever. So I can go and see in the description, all the descriptions grouped by like, let's say seven, uh, 14 records have this description. So here I can have an overview of all the descriptions and I can decide which two best fits my needs for this enrichment. So uh, let me see if I can publish it maybe. Mm -hmm. So that I can uh, run and, okay, this was published to the, okay. So I will showcase now, this is the descriptions that we saw. And let's say that we want to reach with the vocabulary that we created. Here, as I said, we created the custom vocabulary from a CSV file. The CSV file basically contained a label and a Wikidata URI. So Valentina, which is also here with us, did an amazing job with some other partners that they created a custom vocabulary. And they said that we want to use these terms to enrich our records. So we imported this to the tool. I will not get into technical details here. It's also as easy as it was with a, a data set importation. And then we want to add an annotator. So we want the thesaurus annotator. It has many parameters that say here, but we can also just use the simple part. We just use the thesaurus. Uh, and all the parameters you can just use if you want to use only one language. You can use a part of the, of the vocabulary. If you want to auto detect the language in some cases, there are many parameters, but you can just leave it in the default. And execute. So we can see here again that the tool runs with how, how many records have been processed until now. It will take like a few more seconds. You can see we have 2,256 records in this data set. And in the end, we will see how many enrichments we created. I think I can also go here that I have run it before so that we can wait. Uh -huh. It's not, sorry, this was. We see that we did a test with another annotator. It didn't manage to find the reasons, but with this source, we found more than 9,000 enrichments only in this data set. Uh, you can preview the annotations so that you can see what it did. For example, here, you see that these are the texts that we found enrichments. And here you can see the enrichments themselves. You can see the score, the confidence score of the, of the tool. And we will see that this view is very similar to what the validators see. We will go to a validator view later. So basically you can have an overview and see, let's say, okay, we highlight this, where it found this enrichment in the text. We have the title, we have the link, if you wish to open it and investigate a bit further. This is the Wikidata page. And we also have a description if Wikidata uh, provides one. So we see here that we have that this is a group of human power builders, et cetera, et cetera. These are basically what Wikidata provides as a description for its URI. So this is how we use one annotator. I know it may seem a bit complicated, but I'm also trying to keep it short. So you can also interrupt me and ask anything. <laughs> and we could also see just one example of what I mentioned with the nerd annotator. <clears throat> which is basically a tool that we don't need to create the vocabulary. We don't need to uh, do any manual work. We can just, it's plug and play. You can just say, run on this and whatever you find, do that. Let me also check because maybe I have some network issues. Hmm. Sorry for that. Okay, it got me locked down. Locked out.
manager will just showcase the validator and we can finish with that. if it allows me. So as we said, after the, the enrichment, I am able to, to assign some data sets to human validators so that they can also see how the enrichments were. Yeah. I think I'm just connecting to the tool. Oh, no. Well, the basically view would be what we saw when we were having an overview of the enrichments. And uh, the, the validator is able to accept either reject an enrichment, they can propose their own um, if they think that the tool missed something, they can uh, edit some enrichments if they think that they found the more appropriate one. And uh, the user has always an overview on the percentage of the validation in its data set. So we consider that if a validator accepted or rejected an enrichment, then it's valid. Uh, yeah, sorry for this, but I don't know why I can't seem to be able to connect to the tool right now. So maybe I'll stop here and see if we have any questions. And until then, if I am be able to fix something. So yeah, if someone has any questions, any comments, uh, maybe I can clarify something. Or not. Yes, Alex, I, I can see you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, please, please. You can always. I, um, I, I think it was a very, very nice presentation. And uh, um, one, one question that came to my mind is maybe uh, for, because I understand that you will need help from, uh, uh, from a technician basically to set this up and to really um, make that uh, you have maybe your data set that you want to annotate, but then. Um, you need this, uh, this this help to basically uh, figure out how to do this. What is the general process of someone who is interested in uh, in doing this uh, with their collection? Um, they contact someone from ThinkCode. How does this work? Maybe you can say a couple of yeah. words about this. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah. The procedure right now is that yeah, someone contacts us. Uh, we have a discussion about what type of arrangements would better fit their needs, so that we can also employ the right tools. And basically, they give us their data in any format that they want, and we do the whole workflow that we showed. We import, we create the vocabularies, and we do the enrichments. And then we ask them to validate. The validation part is basically on the content owner, the content provider, because basically they know their own data and the target of the enrichment. So we do the enrichment based on their description, and then we ask them to validate and maybe give us feedback, either if we need to do another round of enrichment, or we just proceed with that. Now, what we're trying to do is simplify most things because you know it has many functionalities to fine tune every detail, but that's something that we can only use. I mean, we can understand that it's overly complicated for a simple user. So we're trying to create a simpler uh, UI and you know hide some functionalities that if an expert user wants can uh, can use later. So we're also trying to see if we can do basically with the more, the more automated tools, they say the nerd, because in the nerd tool, you can just hit run and it runs on its own. That's something that maybe a user could do on their own without being expert. So right now, as, you, uh, as we asked, we do the enrichment, but we're trying to give it to the end user as a tool that they can use on their own. They can import their data 
in a simple way with like two or three clicks and then enrich them in the same way. I think if that answers your question, I think, yeah. Yes, it does. Thank you, Rafes. Alex. I don't know if anyone has any comments or any questions. And they can speak directly because I can't see all the cameras. So yeah, if, if not, we can finish here either. I think we're also in time so that Zoom doesn't fix out. And Alex, mm -hmm. have some more questions, please. Sir, and we have also- Yes, the... maybe um, just something. Um, it would be great for those that uh, participate in the session if they can take about two minutes to fill out a short survey. Um, yes, we'll provide the link now in the chat. Yeah, can you do that? Because I was just going to do it. Yes. Okay, thank you. No. Yeah, please fill the form that Alex just sent. It won't take. Oh yeah, right on time. It says that we have seven minutes remaining time, so we're good. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know, Alex, do you have anything more? Just a, a questionnaire if anyone wants, it could be useful for us. And other than that, I want to thank you for being here. I want to welcome you and in this series of webinars and please join the next webinars will be even more interesting. I can promise that. Yeah. Thank uh, you so yeah. much. Uh, okay. I will uh, I will uh, change the link uh, probably. So thank you everyone. Thank you Thanks. very much, Rafes.